focus on your breath. Notice where you feel the breathing process in the body. It's good at the beginning of the meditation to breathe in a way that feels energizing, because you're going to be calming things down. And if you start out already calm and a little sluggish, it just makes you more sluggish. So deep in-breaths can energize you. And then notice what kind of breathing feels good. If the deep breathing continues to feel good, keep up with it. If not, you can let it go more shallow, shorter. Adjust things so they're just right. We're doing this so that we can develop both calm and insight. In the Buddhist breath instructions, he talks about becoming sensitive to how say, the breath affects your sense of the body, how it, in his terms, fabricates your sense of the body. And as you watch the breath, you begin to become more sensitive to the feelings in the body and feelings in the mind, and the perceptions, the perception that lets you stay with the breath as you're trying to make it more and more comfortable. You have to figure out what kind of perception of the breathing is helpful in making it comfortable. I was talking the other day with someone who felt that as he breathed in, it was like pumping air into a balloon. It felt like it was going to burst. Well, if you have that perception, there's a membrane around the body that's going to build up pressure. So think of the body as being wide open like a sponge. The breath can come in and out all the pores of the sponge, all the pores of your skin, and you're just simply being bathed by the breath as it flows through. You notice it's the perception that makes the difference, both in how you breathe and also in how the experience of breathing has an impact on the mind. So there are feelings, perceptions, what the Buddha calls mental fabrications. And then, of course, you're talking to yourself as you do this, commenting on how comfortable the breath is and how comfortable the breath is not, and if it is comfortable, what you can do to spread that comfort around. So you've got three kinds of fabrication, and in every case you're trying to calm them down. So to see things in terms of fabrication, that's insight. To see how you are shaping your experience is the insight side, and the calming is the tranquility side. And sometimes you see meditation systems where they divide the two very sharply, but the Buddha himself doesn't. He says if you want to develop calm and insight or tranquility and insight, you've got to work on getting the mind into deep concentration. The concentration itself is calming, but the ability to understand your mind that allows you to get into deeper concentration, that's the insight. And then once you've got deeper concentration, that develops even more tranquility and calm. The two go together. And the John Sawat would talk about this a lot, how, how as you're trying to get the mind more calm, you're basically looking at for where there are disturbances, either in the breath, in your perceptions, in your feelings, in what you're saying to yourself. And you've got to calm those down. And as you get into deeper and deeper states of concentration, it requires that you become sensitive to disturbances in body and mind. And figure out what are you doing to cause those disturbances, and then you let that go. You don't let go of the disturbance, you let go of the cause. That's the insight. Because there's so much in our range of experience that we're shaping and we don't really realize what we're doing. There's so many things that we experience that we think have come to us ready-made, and we're simply on the receiving end without realizing that we're part of the production. This is particularly important to understand when you're dealing with feelings of pain. 
nobody would want to create a feeling of pain. And there is some extent to which the feelings of pain you have in the body are the results of past actions that you can't change right now. But the way you stitch them together with your perceptions, the things you pay attention to, as the Buddha said, there are feelings that come simply from the act of alertness, what you're being alert to. And then mindfulness, how you stitch this moment of experience to the next moment of experience. And you can stitch things together in such a way that you've got this huge net of bands of tension all around the body. Or there can be a pain that gets stronger and stronger with time. And it's because the way you've stitched things thing together. One of the terms the Buddha has for craving is the seamstress, but stitches things together in a way that creates suffering without even wanting to. But it's what we do, because we're doing this in ignorance. We're paying attention to other things. And so we let just one part of the mind take care of these things. And if it does a sloppy job, well, it's to be expected because you're not giving your full attention. When you're multitasking, a lot of tasks get done, but they don't get done well. And the brain is multitasking all the time here, dealing with issues in the body, issues in your digestion, issues in outside. And so the breath gets left, and the workings of your perceptions get left off to the side. So now we're trying to do some monotasking. Just be very carefully aware of how you're breathing, how the mind stays with the breath, what feelings and perceptions come up. And if there's a feeling of pain, you can ask yourself, how am I stitching this together? What is the perception? What is the model I have in mind for what's actually going on here? Because that's what our perceptions are. They're models. They're sketches. We very rarely deal in total pictures of all aspects of reality all at once, it would be impossible. So we make a sketch for the purpose of whatever we're doing. And we get very good at certain kinds of sketches, not realizing that they may be useful for some purposes, but they actually create a lot of suffering for the mind in other situations. And so look at how you sketch your pains to yourself, and how you stitch them together, and ask yourself, could there be another way? Here there's a disturbance in the mind. What are you doing that's causing the disturbance? And it's important to realize that wherever there is a disturbance, there's something going wrong. All too often we accept things simply as the way they are, thinking, well, that's the way they've got to be. Well, they've got to be that way only because you are getting habituated to it. And this is why the meditation is not just meditation instructions, but also instructions in how to ask questions, what the Buddha calls appropriate attention. Asking yourself, where is the disturbance? And then saying, realizing it's got to be a cause, and it's got to be optional. If anything is disturbing the mind, it's optional. So you see this quest to understand disturbance and undercut the disturbance takes you through the calming and tranquilizing parts of the meditation and also into the insight parts. The two go together. The greater the calm, the more subtle disturbances you'll see. And the more subtle the disturbances you can see and then undo, the greater the calm again. So try to be conscious of the fact that you are stitching things together. And remember those three fabrications that the Buddha talked about. They're right next to ignorance, and yet they're shaping everything else. And if it's done in ignorance, it's going to be causing suffering. If you can see how you're picturing pain to yourself, how you picture your body to yourself, how you picture the mind to yourself. And you can see where it's causing suffering. Say, so maybe I can change the picture. You don't have to change pictures to pictures that lie.
but there are other ways of stitching things together. And it's possible to be with pain and not suffer. It's possible to be with intense physical pain and not suffer. It's all on this issue of fabrication, trying to bring some knowledge to the perceptions you're bringing, particularly to the breath, the perceptions you're bringing to the pain. Because those have a big impact on all the different kinds of fabrications. Be sensitive to how they're creating disturbances and try to see ways in which you can catch the moments where you're not stitching things together that way. So you can see the rise and fall in the level of disturbance, which will allow you to detect things that you didn't see before. They were just part of the background noise. Well, watch out for the background noise. Because that's where a lot of things are instigated.